Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word and family, family, family. I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And once again, thank you for bringing us in with your brother this week and family, family, family. As you saw at the beginning of the signature, one of our very own queens, Queen Jackie, has returned back to the Most High. And this message right now is for her family, friends, and loved ones. Queen Jackie is more alive now than she's ever been. And I would like to go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 7. And I want to read this here. Because I want to make sure that those of you, the loved ones of Queen Jackie, understand this. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Queen Jackie is more alive now than she ever was on this earth. She is in the presence of the most high God of Israel right now as we speak. No pain, no suffering, complete rest for this queen. And I also want to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Do me a favor, drop down to verse 14. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. She'll be back. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Queen Jackie is only asleep right now. Rest. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Once again, Queen Jackie is only asleep. No pain, no suffering. But rest until the Most High brings her back and the reuniting of the family will happen again. So for the loved ones, family, friends of Queen Jackie, my condolences to each and every last one of you. And my sister, our sister, your loved one, she's in the comfort of the Most High, and don't you forget that. You will see her again. Family, we are going to continue from last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. We are going to pick back up where we left off last week in regards to judgment and as i said last week that we were going to talk about this whole demon phenomena and why it is such bs now family please open your bibles to the 1611 king james version bible with the apocrypha and y'all already know when i come with this first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21 y'all already know what type of lesson is gonna be the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 21. Let's go there. Family, open your Bibles. I'm going to say this again as I say often. Do not take my word for anything. If you just rely on what's coming out of my mouth, you are a fool. You are an idiot for not following along in the scriptures as the father told us to do. Don't ever take a man's word for anything. You better make sure everything I'm saying is coming out. This book is 100% accurate. First Thessalonians chapter five and verse 21. Prove all things. 
hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. So I have a responsibility when I come off these scriptures. I got to prove everything according to the scriptures. And that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. We are going to prove just how stupid and idiotic this term demon truly, truly is. So I'm going to make a stinging declaration right now, a stinging declaration about evil. I want you to please go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 45. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, and we're going to start at verse one. And when I tell you a stinging declaration, some of you already know it. But for many of you, you don't. A stinging declaration. Watch this. Isaiah, chapter 45, verse one. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee. And make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. So the most high is going through tearing some things up right now. And who is he doing it to? He said these are the nations. The nations that the world, Christianity, loves to incorporate into our coming salvation. Hmm. And I will give thee treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Stop. The God of who? The God of Israel. Did it say the God of all nations? No. Did it say the God of all people? No. The God of Israel, the Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Verse 4. For Jacob... Our forefather, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, the adopted. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So he's telling blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, y'all may not know who I am, but you belong to me. Verse 5, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Verse 6, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I want to break that down for a little bit right there. Now, it says from the west to the rising of the sun, from the rising of the sun to the west, meaning the whole earth's coverage. Everybody knows and understands that the God of Israel is the God of the Israelites and nobody else. Verse seven. Here comes the stinging declaration. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all. All these things. What is that stinging declaration, family? What did the Most High God of Israel say? That he is the one that creates evil. Now, you'll have the average idiot, the moron, the simpleton, that will try to convince you and everyone else that there are these demonic entities that come in and cause you to do the things that you do. No, no. The most high God of Israel is the one that creates evil. According to the scriptures, not my opinion. According to what the scriptures say. So now I'm going to ask each and every last one of you a question. And I have an open challenge right now. For anyone to show me. In the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha, I challenge anyone to show me one time in the 1611 where the word demon is ever used. 
Let me help you out. It's not. So you know how it goes. I'm just a nigga that is reading the scriptures. He don't know how the hell he know that the word demon don't appear in the scriptures. How he know? Well, as many of you already do, you will never believe it unless Esau says it. So if Esau says it, then you'll credit me. You'll be like, okay, well, this nigga's telling the truth. So, of course, what we're going to do, we're going to read an article right now <laughs> so that Esau can validate what I say being, you know, nobody want to believe me. So the link is in the description. If you care to read along the title of this article, when did the word demon for evil spirit come into popular usage in the English language? Let's see what it says, family. <laughs> the English word demon has been found throughout the New Testament in modern Bible translations since the 19th century. Now, did y'all pick up on that? It said that the term demon was in later modern translations in the 19th century. However, in the 16th and 17th century and earlier, Tyndale Bible, Geneva Bible, King James Bible, Dewey Reams Bible, demons are not found. The term demon, demons are not found in those translations. They use devils rather than demons. The Tyndale Bible and Geneva Bible use D-E-U-I-L-S rather than demons. This is where the Greek versions and Latin Vulgate indicate Demonia. As expected, Diabola from Latin and Greek also gets translated as devil in the Old English versions, which is still done in modern translations. There is one peculiar exception. The Dewey Reams Bible does use demons just one time. The Dewey Reams, not the King James. But even with that, I want you to pay very close attention to what's, being, what's getting ready to be said next. Just one time in Isaiah 34, 14. That verse seems to be referring to wild desert animals. Is it a spirit that it's talking about? No. Is it an angel? No. Is it a foul spirit? No. Wild desert animals animals rather than evil spirits and modern bible translations don't use the word demons in that verse in the clementina vulgata demonia is used in that verse in isaiah but in 19 excuse me but in the 1979 nova vulgate the verse specifically refers to wild desert animals rather than demons, making it compatible with modern Bible translations, modern translations. Otherwise, demonia is repeated in a number of verses in the New Testament in old, excuse me, in both old Clementina and new Nova Vulgate editions. The King James Version, listen close family. The King James Version has zero references to demons. They are always mentioned as devils when the Greek and Latin indicate demonia is used. However, the word demonstrate is found in the King James Version, so the root word was in use. So now we gotta stop for a second and talk about the stupidity of Esau. This word demonstrate. Remember, I always taught y'all Pay attention to their wording. When they are writing their little editorials, pay attention to the lies that they try to weave in. So, based on this theory, the word demonstrate, which D-E-M-O-N, the root word, they're saying that to be demonstrative has to do with demonic activity. So it means that if I were to demonstrate to you how to build a baby's crib, that's some sort of demonic activity. Do you see how stupid they are? <laughs> it gets worse, trust me. It gets worse. Verse, oh, the next one. See, I'm in Bible mode. Next paragraph. 
I'm thinking that demons did not enter the English vocabulary as an evil spirit until the 19th century. In 1833, Noah Webster, the dictionary guy, translated Bible using demons rather than devils for evil spirits in the New Testament for the very first time a signification Bible translation that I can find. So now here you have this Edomite who went in and used the term demon and just happened to implement it in other translations showing you that Noah Webster was not only responsible for writing the dictionary and publishing it, but also in other literary work <laughs> to where the term demon is used in other Bible translations. I'm thinking that demon and demons were introduced into the English language as a wild animal, probably wild desert goats, which in the gospel were inhabited by demons according to modern Bible translations. They were inhabited by devils according to King James and Dewey Reams and D-E-U-I-L-S in Tinsdale and Geneva Bible translations. I'm trying to find out when demons were first used to refer to evil spirits in popular English because it does not appear that it was in popular use back in the days of King James. Wow, I wonder why. You know why? Because it didn't exist. When the scriptures speak, it refers to angels, foul spirits, and spirits. And all of these things are controlled by the Most High. As we read earlier in Isaiah 45, 7, the Most High is the one that creates evil, not a demon. Not a demon. There aren't any monsters from the spirit world running around, running around and manifesting themselves as these creatures, these demons that Hollywood has influenced you to believe. Yes, there is a spiritual world. Yes, there is a spiritual world that contains spirits that does the bidding of the Most High. And when that evil comes to you, it comes for a reason. Do you know why it comes for you? Because you don't have the full armor of God on as he told you, as he instructed you to put on. And you know what that is? Do you know how you put on that full armor? By righteousness. How are you a righteous Israelite? Because you have to keep the commandments of the Most High. But you see, this whole demon phenomena, do you know why this was created? It was created so that you, as an Israelite, can blame somebody else other than yourself for the things that you do. Oh, it's going to get real tonight, baby. Mm. Oh, it's going to get real. Oh, it's going to get real. Because what I'm going to do here tonight, I am going to remove the stigma. I am going to remove the excuses. And I'm going to do it using the scriptures. But before we jump into scripture, <laughs> I got to show y'all something. We got a video that we got to watch. And let me tell you right now, this is one of those videos here where for a lot of you helicopter parents, you know, those of you without a backbone that choose not to let your children see certain things. If you are sensitive to that, then right now you may want to go ahead and send them off. But as y'all already know, I don't sugarcoat anything. So without any further ado, family, let's uh, let's take a look at something. <laughs> I'm not going to give it any type of introduction because I just want you to see it for yourself. So without any further ado, family, here you go. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Treka, and today I am doing this video to warn you all. First of all, do you believe in demons? Well, you better do because apparently there is a demon running around raping people. Don't believe me? Listen to this chilling story told by one of the victims of this horny demon. He delivered me two Sundays back then. A demon came with his penis and put it in my mouth. And, and then he, tried, he came again and he slept with me last week. And I, I told the, the pastor that I need deliverance again. And since then, my private part has been itching me. been itching? Yes. Your private part has been itching you? Yes. Unbelievable. Are you telling me that this demon gave you an STD after he Harvey weinstein you? Yes. A, a demon came with his penis and put it in my mouth. 
But don't worry guys, because thankfully this pastor has the cure and can heal her with his powers. Observe. Get! Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Speak! Who are you? Who are you? Take! Who are you? Look at that demon! 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 Look, look, oral sex! Oral sex demo! You see oral sex! Look, oral sex! Look, 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 look! You, you oral sex! Use oral sex! Let that sperm of that man out! Out! Out, you demo! Out! Late, let go, let go, let go! Let go! Who are you? Who are you? Speak! Speak out! Who are you? Who are you? Jesus name. You demon gonna help you? Yeah. Come on from the private part. You, you in her private part? Demon in the private part. Watch what happens. Fire! 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 Come out from the private. Come out from the private. That was beautiful. What the hell is that? What is your name? Rosman. Rosman. Rosman Daniel. Rosman Daniel. Mm -hmm. What happened to you today? So you prayed for, you delivered me today, and then when I went to the bathroom, I think 15 minutes later, uh, some white stuff came out with, with the blood after you sprayed. Oh, come on, somebody. After I spray with the water. Yes. After I spray, something came out white. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. We interrupt this program to tell you that this show is sponsored by Chlamydia. May your healing and deliverance be permanent in Jesus' name. Come on and give the glory to Jesus. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm not even going to start with that one. <laughs> I'm not even going to say nothing. Y'all stupid. Y'all stupid because y'all want me to say something. I know it. But I'm not. I'm not, I'm not falling for it. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> but that's how stupid some of y'all look when y'all sit there and try to talk about demons. <laughs> that's the level of stupidity. <laughs> that's how so many of our people look. Trying to take the blame off of yourself and put it on somebody else. The absolute stupidity of some of our people. Now, that was just that one. I got another video to show you. I got one more. I got one more until the end of closer to the end of the lesson because there's another one that I want to show you then. But without any further ado, <laughs> here's the second one that I want to show you. Here we go. Venus <laughs> Kubali, you better masturbate. I love God. Imagine. How? For example, I break this sort of with I break every covenant between me and Cliff in the name of Jesus. And you know I have been having sex with the demons. Now I started, I break every covenant with the demons. He's the pastor at his church in a position of trust and Pasco deputies say Gerardo Martinez took advantage of that power sexually abusing a teenage girl at his church over and over again for half of 2017. It's extremely concerning to me because you know people in this position they they have a, um, a level of respect. Darlene Sterrett is one of Martinez's neighbors in Newport Ritchie. She can't imagine what the teenager is going through. Just like any any physical trauma where you'd go to the emergency room, she needs emotional emergency room right now. It's pretty heinous and it is graphic, you know, reading uh, the way everything happened. 
Detectives say the teenager's family were members of the Miracle Christian Church in Newport Ritchie. We're told Martinez, who's 52 years old, said he needed to pray with her. He was uh, telling her that she had a demon locked inside of her and that she also had uh, multiple personalities. According to deputies, during a six-month period, Martinez had several sexual encounters with her at the church, in her home when her parents were gone, and in his car. Kind of obvious that he was, you know, looks like he was grooming her. Martinez posted bond, but no one answered at his home. If he's guilty, his neighbor hopes he's out of her community for good. It should never happen. It should never be okay. And the more that people like that get caught, the better it's going to be. And people will come out and say, well, this happened to me too. And this teenager lives in Tarpon Springs, so more charges could be coming from the Tarpon, Tarpon Springs Police Department. Meanwhile, the Pasco County Sheriff's Office wants to know if there are any more victims. Linda? Let's hope there's not. Very disturbing, Aaron. Thank you. Hi. Right. So let me ask y'all a question, family. Let me ask you a serious question. <laughs> what is the common denominator between those two women? What is the common denominator? What happened? It wasn't them that was doing it, but somebody else that they're able to blame other than themselves for their own lust. They're blaming a demonic entity <laughs> for their lust. When the King James Version Bible mentions nothing about demons, nothing at all. So I'm going to ask you this question. When you stand in front of the most high God of Israel for judgment, will there be any other entity that's standing there with you to take the blame for what you have done? Some of you, <laughs> I'm really afraid to ask that question. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> because I have had conversations with some of you in regards to demons. <laughs> that particular topic. And as I always told you, hey, show me demon in the scriptures. And you can't. Let me tell you all right now, there will be nobody standing with you. Not a damn soul. It'll be you in that judgment, standing in front of that judgment seat. And as a matter of fact, let's please go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and go down to verse 10, please. Let's start proving this here. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, drop down to verse 10. Let's see what it says. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That every one, every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So as you see right here with 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10, you will be judged on your own. Everything that you have done. Not this false demon, not an angel, foul spirit, or spirit, what you did. You, 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 you are going to be judged for the things that you've done, whether it be good or bad. So either you receive a reward or you receive punishment. And as we learned last week, what is the punishment? Eternal fire. That's punishment. What's the righteous going to receive? Eternal life in paradise and rulership and dominion over the earth. Now, we are going to read the book of 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to read this in its entirety. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 1. For as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. Now, what does it say? Armor yourself. How do you arm yourself in righteousness? That full armor of God. So the Most High is already telling you, put on the full armor. You must be righteous. 
How are you righteous? By keeping the law of the Most High. You have to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. If you're not, you're done. You're finished. You are going to die. That fire has a place for you. Verse 2. He, should be that he, no longer should live in the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. So let's go back to the videos. Those two very lustful women blaming other entities. Now, as we just read here with the past couple of scriptures, we both know that's BS. You're going to be judged for what you do. <laughs> Verse three. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, not speaking about the Gentile Israelites that converted over, but the actual Gentiles, the other nations. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Those are all sin. That's all sin that we commit by breaking the law. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but I, shoot me, but live according to God in the spirit. Live according to God in the spirit. How do you live according to the most high in the spirit? By keeping his laws. Because the Holy Spirit is the law. Verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Now, when it speaks of that charity, is that talking about money? No. What is that talking about? It is talking about giving your time to teach our people. And let me read that one more time because it says something very significant. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. So who are the yourselves? <laughs> Did it say everybody on the planet? No. Did it say one nation versus another? No. Among yourselves. So that's inclusive. Who is that inclusion for? Israel. And it also says that that covers a multitude of sins, meaning you bring this work out and the father is going to forgive a lot of the stuff that you do or did. Verse nine, use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Build each other up with these words. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God, bringing out the scriptures. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Stop. We talked about this last week. What are those? Those are your talents. Your musical ministry, your poetry, your writings. All those things. That the father gave you talent for. In your fashion. That God in all things may be glorified. Through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Dominion. Rulership. Who's going to be in rulership? The Israelites in Christ. Rulership. Just like we talked about last week. And what did it end off with? Amen. And you know what amen means? Finish. Finalize. Boop. That's what it means. Let's continue. Verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. So don't be afraid of what's coming. The father put you through things to build you. Verse 13. But rejoice 
Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So all the things that we go through, all the things that we will be judged on, all the things that we went ahead and said no to, that we knew was against the Most High. The Father said, for those of us living righteous, we will be exceeding with joy when that sky crack and we see Christ and the chariots coming to save us off this planet. Because remember, we are not saved yet. As the idiotic Christian would tell you, oh, I'm saved, I'm saved. No, you're not. You are still in captivity. You are still a slave to Esau's entire, entire world. Because the Father gave the world over to them and it actually belongs to us. But we're suffering right now. Verse 14, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye <laughs> for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. So he's breaking it down. Don't do these things. Stay out of people's business. Don't be a gossiper. Don't be a murderer. Don't be lustful. There's so many things that the father said that we cannot do. And what does all of this go right back to? The law that he gave us. And this is the New Testament for the idiot moron that loves to say that the law is done away with in the New Testament. Okay. Because here we have right here Peter telling us we got to keep the law. Let's continue. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, a Christian is a real person following Christ. A real one. Being a Christian has nothing to do with Christianity. A true, real Christian is one that can honestly say that they keep the commandments of the Most High. Because that's what Christ taught us to do. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin. I'm going to read that again. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? We're going to come back to verse 17 because there's something very prominent here, but I want to finish this out. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? <laughs> Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So what is Peter telling us? If we don't keep the commandments of the Most High, there is a judgment that is coming for us. So let's go back to 17. I want to read this here. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. What's the house of God? We're not talking about a church. What is the house of God, family? So now, as you already know, we got to get precepts. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. I want you to go Old Testament. I want you to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 33. The book of 2 Chronicles chapter 33. Go down to verse 7 for me, please. And let's see exactly what the house of God is. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God. Of which God said to David, Judah, and to Solomon, his son, another Judite, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. What's the house of God? The 12 tribes of Israel. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. 
the chosen people of the most high God of Israel. <laughs> you can't get around it. It don't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what your mammy. It doesn't matter what your pappy. It doesn't matter what your grandmammy or your grandpappy told you. It doesn't matter. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that the most high God of Israel is only for his Israelites. The house of God is the house of the Israelites. And we are the ones that's going to be judged for breaking his commandments. So we'll be judged for righteousness or unrighteousness. We'll be judged for doing the work or for our work in sin. Which side do you fall on? Okay. So now, family, I got another video. <laughs> I got one more. I got one more for you. We are now going to get into the whole influence and why so many of you, even me at one time, even me at one time, I'm no hypocrite. I used to believe in all that nonsense too. We're going to see where the influence of this whole demonic thing comes from. So without any further ado, family, Take a look at this. Family, <laughs> if you're really trying to figure out where this whole demonic influence comes from, it's Hollywood. Hollywood and their imagery, because niggas believe what they see. First and foremost, <laughs> let's talk about that little nasty ass Linda Blair. So that movie that we just saw is The Exorcist that came out in 1973. The absolute disgust. The absolute disgust. They chose to first and foremost take a relic, a false image of our Messiah, Yahweh Shai, and this little girl took that cross and stabbed herself in her little stink pink patch. And Hollywood allowed this to be shown. Now, y'all wanna talk about evil? Y'all wanna talk about some damn monsters? Hmm? Y'all wanna talk about it? Let's talk about it. First and foremost, that was a little girl. For those of you who are not familiar with Linda Blair, first and foremost, her birthday was, is January 22nd, 1959. The movie The Exorcist was being filmed from October to November of 1972. Now, if you do the math, that puts Linda Blair at 13 years old. You want to talk about disgusting, demonic activity, you can start there. This is Esau's reflection. Do you know why they put this out like this? Because they want to show you just who they are. <laughs> Straight up. Nasty. That was a little girl that these perverts allowed to do that. Absolutely filthy and disgusting. 
but they don't give a damn. But that imagery, that movie alone really set the bar for what came next. And that is all of these demonic Annabelle and the conjuring and all that stuff. That's what y'all believe. <laughs> That's what y'all believe. Can I ask you a question? And I'm going to ask this here. First and foremost, let me just say this. <laughs> to our Hispanic brothers and sisters, y'all need to sit this one out because y'all are guilty of this. And y'all are guilty of this because of Catholicism. There is... First of all, wait, no, no, let me back up for a minute. No, no, now that I sit here, I think about this. Hold on a second. Uh, our Hispanic brothers and sisters, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Benjamin... Y'all sit this one out because y'all are all guilty of conjuring like voodoo and things like that and all that stupidity. Mm -mm. And for uh, our Hispanic brothers and sisters, what is it? Please, I know I'm probably going to say it wrong, but the Santa Gria or whatever the hell her name is and all that stupidity and stuff like that. Yeah, that's all Catholicism. And as y'all see in that movie, that's exactly what they were going back to. If you've ever seen that movie. There is one tribe... <laughs> <laughs> there is one tribe that don't play that game on a count of three I want all of us to say it together for that one tribe that don't play the stupidity with this here on a count of three one, two, three Judah Judah never played that stupid game and do you know why when it comes to possession and all that stuff because a black mother and father would have beat the living hell out of you and told you to tell whoever it is that you are worshiping or possessed by, come to the house, come get your things and get the hell up out that house. Let them take care of you. Let them pay your bills. Let them all your game systems and all that stuff. Yeah, let them niggas take care of it. Judah, we ain't play them games. You would have got your ass whooped upside down and sideways for trying to even use some excuse like that. And let me tell you, first and foremost, y'all have seen that movie before, right? I wish the hell somebody would slap my mother and said there was a demon. That would have been it for their ass and the damn devil. Y'all understand me? We don't play them games at all. So now let's get back into these scriptures, family. I want you to please go to the book of Romans. We are going to go to the book of Romans. And this is New Testament, by the way, chapter 14. We are going to start this here at verse 10. So please open your Bibles to Romans chapter 14 and verse 10. All right, Romans chapter 14 and verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So, then every one of us shall give account of God. Shoot me. Let me restart that again. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You. You have to give an account for everything that you have done. You literally are going to have to stand in front of the most high God of Israel and give an account for everything that you did. Not a demon, not a spirit, not an angel. All the things that you did. And you're gonna have people, I'm telling y'all right now, there's going to be people that is going to be standing in front of the most high and still have an excuse for the things that they've done. Versus being like, you know what? I did all those things, Father. I did all of them. It was me. I'm ashamed. I did those things. I broke your law. I'm telling y'all, it's not a joke out here when it comes to this. And the thing is that it's coming so fast and so quickly. People don't realize how close we are to the end. We are so close to the end. 
prophecy right now is going on over in the Euphrates River. That's right, in the Euphrates, right now, it is drying up. And we all know what happens after the Euphrates dry up. There will be angels that's under that, that's coming up out of there. According to the scriptures, we don't have a lot of time left. So now, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 20. Let's get some more. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, go down to verse 10, please. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, and verse 10. Let's see what this says. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Now, we talked about that last week, did we not? Who was that prepared for? That fire. Where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. There's torment that's coming in that fire. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Whew. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So let's break that down. So you have the book of life. You know what that book of life contains? Everything that you have done. And what is the other book that's going to be open? It's going to be the scriptures. What do the scriptures contain? They contain the law. The things that you were supposed to do. So you're going to have the angels going down, reading the book of life. It's like, okay, yeah, this nigga did this and nigga did that. Okay, he did this right. No, he was doing all this wrong. Or you're going to, for the worst case, have, oh, this nigga ain't do nothing right. <laughs> Into the fire you go. Let's continue. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death in hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works. You are going to be judged by the things you do on this planet. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Wow. Mm. Because as you already know, you will be blotted out of the book if you're not keeping the commandments. So now, we are going to take this here. We're going to streamline this. Please go to the book of John chapter 3. The book of John chapter 3, because this is the, the famous one that everybody loves doing. The famous one. And we all know why John 3 is famous. John 3, 16. The one that the world takes and says that everybody on the planet is included in the salvation to come. Let's see what the Bible actually says. Y'all ready? John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He was an Israelite. So here you have these two Israelites as having a conversation, Christ and Nicodemus. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So Nicodemus is look, looking at Christ and like, look, brother, I already know who you are. I, I know where you come from. The things that you're doing, only God can do. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, verily, as we learned last week, what does verily mean? It means truthfully. 
Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There's that born again thing there. And the misconception of what many people believe that it is. Verse four. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, what does this mean? Now, you can go back to the lesson in regards to baptism. OK, it does not mean you submerge yourself in water and you come out all fresh and clean, fresh and sin free. No, it doesn't mean that. It is the water by the washing of the word, just like the scripture says. It has nothing to do with submerging yourself in water and coming back up because all you're doing is coming back up as a wet sinner. The washing of the water by the word means that you have to read the scriptures, learn the laws and apply them in your life and keep them. Verse. Six. That which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee. Ye must be born again. So Christ is trying to tell Nicodemus, say, look, 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 you're thinking about the wrong thing. You're thinking about the wrong thing. You're focused on the physical. It's like pay attention. Verse eight. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So it's like, first and foremost, you can't see the wind where it comes from. You can't see it. You can feel it, though. You feel it. You can feel the direction, but you don't know where it's coming from. That's just what it's like with the spirit. Because many of you believe that you're in this truth on your own doing. <laughs> How silly of you. You are in this truth because the most high went ahead and tapped your shoulder. Son, daughter, wake up. You're one of the chosen. It's your time now. Verse nine, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? So right now, yo, he's, he's out his mind. Now, yo, he's like, Christ, what are you talking about? Now, remember, this is the ruler of the Jews. So someone that was supposed to have known the scriptures, right? But he has no idea what Christ is talking about. None whatsoever. So Christ is schooling him right now. Jesus answered and said unto him, art thou a master of Israel? And knowest not these things. So Christ is checking. Hold on a second. Nigga, nigga, how are you an Israelite and you don't know what you're talking about? How are you an Israelite and you claim to be teaching other Israelites? What does that represent today? It is called the Christian church. These whack ass black pastors. Oh, yeah, right now I'm getting fired up. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. So Christ let me know. First and foremost, we know what we're talking about. Those of us in this truth, those of us bringing out the true gospel, we know exactly what we're talking about. We have seen the evidence of things. You haven't because you're not in the spirit. You are not in the correct spirit to be teaching anybody. Christ checked him. Verse 12. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Christ said, you can't even understand what's going on on earth. Rather, what's coming in the spirit or what's in the heavens. You have no idea. Nigga, sit your ass down. You don't know what you're talking about. Verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. So what is Christ saying? Christ is saying, first and foremost, me, I'm going to have to return back to the chariots. <laughs> I came from the chariots. I travel with the chariots. I got my own. 
<laughs> and I will be going back there. You see. Verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, does that just mean that that word believeth? Does that just mean that, okay, I believe in Christ, so I'm saved? No. What is the believing part? Keeping the commandments. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Wow. So there's the one right there, John 3, 16, that everybody loved quoting every Edomite, every Ishmaelite, everybody who claims to be in Christianity, thinking that the most high God is going to send Christ back to save them. No, no, it's not going to happen. How do we know that? The word whosoever. Now, as we know, the Bible will always define and defend itself. So family, please, I want you to go to the book of Acts, chapter 2. Please go down to verse 21. The book of Acts, chapter 2, go down to verse 21. Let's see exactly who the whosoever is. Is the whosoever talking about the entire world? All of the inhabitants of the earth? All of the nations? Or is it talking about one in particular people? Let's see. And it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 22. Ye men of Israel. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also know. Ye men of Israel. Woo! Woo! Mm. Ye men of Israel. And of course, speaking male, female vernacular. And the reason why it's addressing the men because we are the priests. You men of Israel, the whosoever are the Israelites, baby. The whosoever are the Israelites. We are the only ones being saved. The righteous Israelites. <laughs> it's not the whole world. And just as in John 3, it just explained what did Christ say? He said, by these things, by these miracles that I've done, we witnessed these things. We've seen all these things. And Nicodemus saw it too. That's what it's referring to. Christ is only for his brothers and sisters. By blood. By the seed of David, which we all come from. Every last black, Hispanic, and Native American. Us. Salvation is for us. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. The book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. Who's going to be saved? But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. That's the world that Christ was talking about in John 3. It's the world of Israel, our world, ours. Because there's many worlds that's right here on this earth. Many worlds. You have the aquatic world. You have the underground world of creepy, crawly things. You have the avian world. You have the world outside of Israel. And then you have the world that is Israel. All praises to the Most High. All praises. So now, let's go back. Let's recap a little something from last week. I want you to go to Matthew 25 and I want you to go down to verse 41. Let's wrap this up. Matthew chapter 5 verse 41. Then shall he say 
also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. That judgment that's coming, that fire, that eternal fire, that ferment heat that's coming to this planet. Mm. You have a choice to be in it or be out of it, living in eternal life, living in bliss, living in rulership of the other nations on the planet. It's all up to you, though. It is all up to what you do. Nobody else. You. It's all what you do. What choice are you going to make, Israel? What choice are you going to make, family? My beautiful black, Hispanic, and Native American family. What you going to do? You going to live forever or you going to burn in that fire forever? Which one? That choice is yours. That's judgment. And judgment all depends on what you do. Not a demon. Not an angel. Not a spirit. Because if an a uh, foul spirit, I'll use that term, if a foul spirit was to inhabit you, that means that you're not living in righteousness. You have to give them an opening to come in. There are no demons, but there are spirits. And who does the most high blame for that? You, if you get inhabited, influenced by one of those spirits, because your full armor is supposed to be on. And how do you have kinks in that armor? Living in sin. You could be working on so many other things, but you are falling short. That's an opening for them to get right in. So whatever that sin may be that you're struggling with. Now, remember, none of us are going to be perfect yet. And that includes me. I'm no hypocrite. That includes me. I still got things that I'm working on. You got things that you're working on. But here's the thing. We have to keep each other encouraged. We must. Our brothers and sisters, that is what we must do for each other. Because if we don't, we are in that fire. And one of the worst things that I would ever want to ever encounter is looking at somebody that I know I could have helped burn right next to me. No thanks. I want to continue to encourage our people to build us up and to encourage each and every last one of us to keep these commandments. Now, family, I have used up enough of your time here tonight. It's the Sabbath. So you know what that means? It's a day of rest. So here it is. You received the food for tonight on the Sabbath. So now it's time for you to rest. Go enjoy your family, enjoy your children, enjoy your mothers and fathers and sisters. Embrace each other, love each other, hug each other. Do what you must do. Give honor, glory, and praise to the Most High God of Israel. Thank Christ for dying for us. Us, 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 us. Not the whole world, us. Give him that thanks. Give the most high the things that you got a roof over your head right now. You have electricity, you have Wi-Fi, you have food, you have transportation. And even if you don't have these things, you still have your life. You breathe and you have your health. You got something to thank him for. Because quite frankly, I don't think we thank him enough. So family, I love y'all. And I want y'all to enjoy this Sabbath. And Lord willing, we will see each other next week. And with that being said, Israel, I love you. I'm out.